here that you will say it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Wherever you come from. God's got people all over the world. I'm learning that every day. It's amazing to me. Hallelujah. I thank God for the internet. Uh, it's, it's a great tool that uh, the Lord using to reach so many people. We hear from people all over the world. It's just, it's amazing how God's blessing and <clears throat> doing a work throughout the earth. Amen. Stand with me one more time, would you please? So good to have you. So good to have you. Where's Jeffers? He's still there? Okay. He's sitting down. That's okay. You're here. He's here. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I, I, you know, when you get to heaven and you go looking for me, or I go looking for you, you know, well, I heard Bob was down there in the valley walking along the road with Jesus. That's where I want to be. Walking and talking with Jesus. What a privilege it will be. Isn't that what we're all living for? Longing for. No matter what. It's like the old song, when we see Jesus, all the sorrows and pains and troubles of the earth will seem nothing. We'll look upon his face. It'll be worth it all just to look upon his face. What kind of a God is he? He's the creator of all things. God made the worlds by Jesus Christ. The scripture tells us. All things were made by him. By the word of God. He deserves. He is worthy. He is the only one. God is the only one worthy of our worship. Amen. Amen. Our adoration, he is worth all praise and all glory. Amen. For he is creator, savior, redeemer. He's the lover of our souls. And he is worth living for. He's worth living for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have not seen, nor ear has heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. He's revealed them unto us by his spirit. doesn't mean that we understand what they are. It's just that we know that they're there. That's what Paul means. He has revealed to us that they're there. We don't know what it is yet, but it's there. We haven't seen it yet, but it's there. We haven't, we, you know, we haven't heard it, but it's there. What God has prepared for us who love him. I don't care what comes and goes. I don't care how hard the devil fights. I don't care what problem we may go through pressures of life. God has prepared a place for us. I'm going on. You're going on? I'm going on. Glory to God. I'm going on. 
If I have to drag these chains, I'm going on. But Jesus breaks the chains. If we will but believe what he said. Hallelujah. Father, bless your people this morning. You already have. Hallelujah. Raise your hand and say, Father, I thank you for blessing me this morning. Hallelujah. Now feed us with your bread from heaven. We need some bread, Lord. Ain't nothing like good hot bread. And Lord, would you put a little butter on there for me? I like butter on my hot bread, Lord. That makes it so good, Lord. Yeah, the real stuff, man. We don't want all that margarine. We don't want that cheap stuff. We want the real stuff. Man. Hallelujah. Say, Lord. Will you butter my bread? Amen. You, Amen. <laughs> you may be seated. God bless. Hey, hey, man, this this is good for the this is good for the old and the young. Lord, keep me young. <laughs> but Lord, if I have to hobble and drag along, I'll do it. <laughs> Jebbers, if you had to get on that water, here I come, Lord, I'm a coming. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I'm on my way. Somebody says, What does the church need today? That's what they need. I need to hear somebody say, you're on your way. Right. Not to hell, but to heaven. Amen. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, the book of Matthew, chapter 5. <clears throat> I'm going to read some familiar, some real familiar scriptures to you. But I had some thoughts, some, some, some more thoughts added to these scriptures. I've probably read these scriptures to you before. I'm sure I have. But, you know, the Word of God is just full of thoughts. The Word of God is like a diamond mine or a, or a gold mine. You go along and you just find nuggets all the time. <laughs> Amen. Chapter 5, Jesus has given us the Beatitudes, as we call them. Blessed is this one, blessed is that one, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the mourn, blessed are they that peacemakers, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are they that hunger and thirst. Blessed, 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 blessed are all these people. He also said, blessed are you when men persecute you. That's, that's one part we seem to always leave out. But that's part of, that's part of it too. Blessed are you when men persecute you and say evil things against you for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Great is your reward in heaven, he said. <clears throat> blessed are you. And then he said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. First of all, salt adds flavoring. Salt adds flavoring. Everybody likes to put salt in their tomatoes. Or maters, whichever one you prefer. <laughs> on your potatoes. Or taters, whichever one you prefer. All 
or your watermelon, <coughs> or your eggs. Cantaloupe? I don't know. I never cantaloupe. I'll have to try that one. We just like salt on everything. It's probably, that's probably what's wrong with half of us this morning. We got too much salt. No. Salt adds flavoring. Salt is a preservative. It preserves things. Huh? It keeps things from spoiling, meat from rotting. Salt melts coldness. You know it? Salt melts coldness. Salt heals wounds. It's a healer. Now, as I was thinking upon this, all of this, what would life be without salt? Bland. Tasteless. But not the, not the, let's say flavorless, put it that way. Not the right flavor. Things would rot. Everything would be cold. Wounds be open. In other words, <clears throat> the whole world would be in a very sad state. What would the world be if Jesus hadn't come? You ever think about that? What would the world be like today if Jesus hadn't come? What would the world be if God hadn't given to it a moral law to live by? Many people still don't pay any attention to God's law. But suppose there wasn't that restraint put upon civilization. That's what the law is. The law is a restraint. It is like a chain on a mad dog. The dog is still mad. But the chain restrains him or restricts him from doing too much damage. It doesn't change him. It doesn't make him a new dog. It just keeps him from hurting somebody else. But what would the world be like without that chain to restrain the mad dog? Turn around and look at somebody and say, you know, you couldn't do without me. Jesus said, ye are the salt of the earth. People today who boast about who they are and what they do, how important they are in the world, how important their position is, the elite, the rich, the powerful. 
But I have news for you. You are only there because we are here. You only retain your position and have what you have and do what you do because God's people are in the earth. America is what it is today even though it has much wickedness and much sin and perversion that's going on in the world today. But America is what it is because of God's people that are in it. I got news for you, Jack. It's because of God's people. The people that love God. The people that know God. And those who don't know God at least respect God and His law. When the moral law of God is exalted in the land, when righteousness is exalted, then the nation is exalted. Huh? That's what he said. Righteousness exalts a nation. What makes a church good that you go to? I'll tell you what makes this church good. The people who come here that love God. You come to this church and I'll guarantee you, you're not going to taste something bland. You're going to taste something that's got some flavor in it. God wants you to live your lives the same way. When, he, when you walk into your home with your family, He wants your family to be savory. We always get back to food around here. I don't understand. <laughs> Maybe it's a southern thing. I don't know. It's because we're in the south. <laughs> We think about food a lot around here. You are the salt of the earth. That means there is something that needs flavoring. That means there's something that needs healing. That means there was someone who was cold and indifferent that needs melting. That means there's something that needs preservation to be kept from going totally rotten. If it wasn't for the people of God in this nation. And now listen, God uses us. Somebody say, oh, it's the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God in you. Yes. God uses things to do His will, do His purpose, yes, to accomplish His purpose in the earth. He uses you. Amen. Me, he uses, he uses people. Yes. If it wasn't for the people of God that God uses... I would hate to think the condition that America would be in right now. You think it's bad now? And somebody said, well, it's getting worse and it ain't going to get any better. <laughs> Supposing there weren't no people around here that love God, what do you think would happen? Oh, my God. You would say, get me out of here. When people live in a country where the laws of God 
and I'm talking about the law in the heart of man, have been suppressed. When people have been subjected to godless leaders and governments, and the whole nation is suppressed and put under bondage, slavery, to such a thing. The people mourn. The people weep. They struggle. They do without. They do their best to get along. Not to stir up any trouble with anybody. Because if they did, they'd be thrown in prison or killed. Where there is no salt. Where there is no healing. Where there is no warmth. There's trouble. It's despair. Desperation. But God in his mercy, reaches even into the most impossible places. He seeps in. He comes in. Can God crack the hardest nut? He cracked you. That's pretty hard. <laughs> Can God change the situation? He changed yours. Can God work a miracle? He did for you. Hallelujah. Let us raise the banner high. Let us proclaim upon the housetops the goodness of the Lord. Let us show forth the praises of God in our life. We know that in the end, God wins. Or all evil. Jesus won it actually at the cross. But we're just waiting for everything to manifest itself. It's already done. I got news for these guys out here thinking that they're going to create some kind of global <laughs> order of things. You have already lost. You've already lost. Do what you will. Say what you will. Believe what you will. You have already lost. If it wasn't for the people of God in the world, huh? you'd already be in hell. They're the very ones that keeps you going. It is for their sake that the wrath of God has not poured out yet. You and I who believe in God are not appointed under wrath. But to obtain salvation at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And as long as we're here, the devil may run rampant over the, over the face of the earth. But I got news for you. He can only do so much as long as God is working in his people. 
The devil's going to try everything, but I got news for you. He is a loser just like everybody else is that doesn't know the Lord. The Lord. The devil's going to try everything. But he is restrained. He is held in place. By what? The salt of the earth. Sometimes we look at what's going on in government and politics. And we say, my God, what is going on in the world? And I know sometimes it just looks like God has forgotten about everything. But you're here. I'm still here. You are still what the world needs. Let me put it to you this way. You have within your breasts what this world needs. We have what Washington needs if they would just listen. We have what every country upon this earth needs. We are the condition. The salt. Don't look at yourselves as somebody that's helpless and, 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 and you're, not doing, you're not doing any good. You're not worth anything. Right. You're not worth anything only if the salt loses its savor. That's right. If the salt loses its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It's fit for nothing. <laughs> but be cast out and trodden under the foot of men. Let us therefore keep our testimony. Let us hold fast to what we are and who we are and not let it go because we are the healing of the wounds, the restraint of the evil. Do you see that? Your prayers, your lives, your testimony, your very presence in this world makes a difference. Some, some Christians act like, act like that, you know, that they don't make a difference in the world. Did you know your presence in the church house this morning makes a difference? Yeah, you have an effect on everybody. The moment you walk in these doors in this little church, you make a difference. That's why when you're not here, you're so missed, and things are different when you're not here. Somebody say, well, now what? The Lord's still the Lord? Yeah, he's still the Lord. But he uses you and me. If the Lord chose to come down from heaven and appear in this little building before everybody where you could see him like an angel or something, oh, I, I, I'd go for that. I'll go for that. How many would? Well, I got news for you. When you walk in the door of the church, my Lord, the Lord just appeared in with you. Yeah. Somebody may look at you and think you're a little devil, but if you got Jesus, you're a little angel walking around. <laughs> and when you walk in, praise God, you make a difference in the church among God's people. Not just in a building on Sunday, but throughout your life, everywhere you go in life. When you're in a group of people, everywhere you, you, you make a difference. Praise God. You bring healing and health and restoration and preservation. You bring all these things into the conversation. Praise God. 
Do you ever walk up to a group of people that are always, all they're talking about is their aches and pains? And I don't know what I'm going to do. We're all guilty. Don't look at me like, like owls in a tree. You're guilty. I've done it. You've done it. What we need to do is walk into the conversation and say, well, let me tell you what we can do about it. What does God say about this situation? You are the salt of the earth. Don't get dampened by the world. Keep your powder dry. Keep your faith in God and keep your powder dry. Don't let the devil dampen the effect that you have. You are effective for Christ. Every God-fearing, God-loving individual upon this earth is effective. That's why you're here. Somebody says, I don't know why I'm coming to church. You lost your salt in us somewhere. You came to church, praise God, to, en to enjoy the flavor, to savor the meat, to eat the buttered bread. <laughs> To enjoy with one another. To praise God. Amen. To have fellowship one with another. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. You ever sit around and listen to some ladies talk about the recipes? The things they like to cook. It's enjoyable. It's enjoyable to hear about all, all these savory. <laughs> Plates or dishes. These savory dishes. Oh, let me hear about That's good. Let me hear more about that. And what else did you put? You put that in there? Really? Yeah, I put a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a little bit of this. A little bit. I didn't know that. What else did you put in there? And we start swapping our recipes with one another and telling each other how to do this. And do. You know what? That's what we do when we come to church. That's right. Hallelujah. That's what you do throughout your lifetime with one another. You tell each other the ingredients of life. Everything is good. It's going to be all right if we just do this. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. I'm telling you, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Hallelujah. It'll be good. You hang in there. It's going to be good. Yeah. Why is that? Because that's what we are. We're always looking and expecting the good. Oh, the devil's always going to pop his head up somewhere. Just turn on the television now. You'll see him. Open the newspaper, you'll see him. Anywhere, you, anywhere, every, anywhere and everywhere you look, the devil's got his head stuck in there somewhere. But you got to look past that old devil. You got to look past what's going on, and you got to see the good. You got to quit being discouraged by what's happening around you and begin to bring the goodness and the love and the grace and the power and the effectiveness of the Holy Spirit. It's in your life and in my life. Yeah, hallelujah. You got to sometimes shout at that devil. I remember Smith Wigglesworth read one time one of his books he wrote, Smith Wigglesworth. You ever hear him? I believe he was talking about some, it was a lady or a man that's fixing to get on a bus, I believe it was. And there was a dog, a ferocious little old dog, barking at him coming at him, trying to bite him. He's trying to get rid of it. And finally, he just shouted at that, at that, at that dog, You get 
get out of here! You know, like that. And that dog turned around and run off. And Smith Wiggle was there watching that. That's why we ought to do the devil. Quit messing around with the devil. Look at the devil, get out of here! When the devil came to Jesus, what did he do? Get thee behind me, Satan! Oh, the devil's going to come at you tooth and toenail. You better believe he is. But that doesn't mean that you're whipped. That doesn't mean that you ain't got anything. That doesn't mean that you're worthless. That doesn't mean that you're just, you don't know what you're going to do because the devil's coming at you. Tell Satan, get behind you. Because he knows that you, that you know when you don't know, when you finally do know what you do know. Man, you have something within you that he don't want you to impart. He don't want you to say. He don't want you to talk about it. He don't want you to bring up the subject. He just wants you to, he just wants you to talk like he talks. All down and out, and I don't know what I'm going to do, and I'll try to make it out here. You know, we just can't help the way things are going. I'll just try my best. You're losing your saltiness, honey. You're losing it. It's time to get salty. What salty is that? What flavor is that? The same flavor of Jesus. His flavor. His healing, his words, his faith. Look through the situation with his eyes, his faith, his heart. That's being salty. Grit. Be men and women of grit. Let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more to tell you about. <laughs> That's just the first one. I only got 15 minutes. What am I going to do, Laura? That God uses to preserve this world. Let us not lose it. Let us not let it slip away from us. Let us be salty enough and gritty enough and bold enough and fierce enough. And daring enough yes, man. then Jesus went on to say, "You are the light of the world Amen. now he's just not talking about the light inside the church house on Sunday morning he's not just talking about the light inside your home with your family and friends He's not just talking about the light within the realms of your little world where you live. He's talking about the whole wide world. Huh? The people that love and fear God are the light in this dark world. Supposing there was no light, it would be a dark, dark, cold world. 
But God never intended for it to be that way upon this earth. He said in the beginning, let there be When God saved you, that's what he said. Yes. Let there be light. That's right. yes. To everyone in this world, I say, who dares to defy God and to create a world without him, I tell you that those people in all the earth who fear and love God are the light of this world. And without them here, there would be no light. Somebody said, Jesus is the light. Yeah, but Jesus is in you. Jesus is not standing on the street corner or walking down the dusty roads of Galilee any longer. He's not standing in Jerusalem or on the Mount of Olives or passing through the towns and villages of Israel. You are. You are the light. Yes, you are. In every situation of life, and we all encounter situations of all kinds, adverse or agreeable, whatever the situation may be, you bring light into that situation. <laughs> Don't give up. Don't be overwhelmed. Darkness can never extinguish the light. Shall I say that one more time? Somebody said, well, it's getting dark in this world. Oh, look at Washington. What's going on in Washington or wherever else it's at in the world. Look, it's getting so dark. I don't care how black it is. The darkness will never extinguish the light. Amen. And the smallest light, glory to God. I don't care how small it is. The smallest light. This little light of mine. You got a little light. Well, I'll walk up one of them and say, hey, man, you got a light? You got Jesus? You got a little light? I need a light. I need a light, man. But the smallest light will drive away the deepest, darkest darkness. It will dispel the darkness. No matter how dark it is. Think about it. You ever, you ever been in Carlsbad Cavern? I have. In New Mexico? Carlsbad Caverns? They took us way down in the earth, about 800 feet down. I guess the thing it was, 1,000, whatever it was. Very bottom down there, and they turned out the lights. Oh. I guarantee you it is so dark you can feel it. If you don't believe me, go to Carlsbad Cavern and check it out. 
Go to Carlsbad Cavern, go down in there with, with the guide. And I think now they give you these little uh, cassette players that you, they play for the guide. They, don't, they used to have a guide, a man that would take you down through there. Now they give you this little cassette player you carry with you, and you turn it on, and, and it tells you where you're going, what, what you're looking at as you're walking along. But when I went there the first time, they had a guide, a man, took us down in there, and we got down so far, and they turned the lights out, and it was so pitch dark. You couldn't see this. You couldn't see your hand in front of you. You could have sliced that darkness. You could feel it. So thick, it was so dark. So, I mean, not anything. You could see nothing. He turned on a little flashlight, and it dispelled all that darkness. Just one little flashlight. And that darkness fled away. The children of God, if you believe in Jesus, if he's in your heart and life, you are the light of this earth. Amen. So quit talking about how dark the darkness is. Quit talking about how bad things are. Yes. We all know how bad things are. Yes. It's kind of like talking about the devil. Do you like to talk about the devil? No, we don't do it because we know what the devil is. We know how bad and how ugly and how horrible the devil is. Now, I don't want to talk about the devil. So I don't want to talk about the darkness because we are the light. We are the light. As long as we're here. Somebody say with me, as long as I'm here. As long as I'm alive. Upon this earth. I am the light of this earth. Hallelujah. Now notice Jesus didn't say you're the light of heaven. Because when you get to heaven, you don't have to worry about the light. He's the light, praise God. There won't be any sun shining there because he's the light that shines the city. But as long as we're on this earth, living our lives upon this earth, you have the advantage you have the upper hand. You have the best to give. You have the words that heal. You have what mankind needs. Like this brother from Louisiana told me this morning. The things that's happened to him that God has done in his life. The miracles has taken him. He had a stroke in three days. He went home from the hospital. And other thing, you could talk to, to a person after person with great testimonies Amen. of what God has done in their life. Amen. You are the light. Amen. Keep shining, brother. Yes. Every one of you are the light. Yes. Amen. Keep shining. Amen. Jesus said, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. So what is light? Light is simply what is revealed. Manifestation. For whatsoever doth manifest is light. Whatsoever is made known that's what light is. When you make known the Lord that's in you, 
That is light. That is light. When you make known the truth, that is light. When you stand up and speak for Jesus in the face of the enemy, that is light. You know, some Christians act like, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I think they need to go home and light a candle and carry it around with them. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. No. The life which you live. And it is seen by everyone. City that's set on a hill can't be hid. That's what light is. It's made known. It's not covered. It's made known. He said, let your light shine. Don't put it under a basket or a bushel. But give light to all that come into the house. That doesn't mean that if you put a bushel basket over your light that your light's gone out. It just means you're covering it up. The light is still there. Let it be known. Don't let Satan, as the old song said, don't let Satan blow it out. That's right. Amen. Fact is, he really can't. He can fool you into believing something. Don't let Satan fool you and deceive you to believe in a lie. If you know the truth, speak the truth. If you know what's right, Stand up for what's right. right. Speak out and speak up. (laughs) That, my friend, is light. That's light. And when you know the Lord, that can't be hidden. That can't be hidden. People are going to know. Okay. Okay. 1 Corinthians 3.16, as with John 3.16, 1 Corinthians 3.16, know ye not, I'm done past my time, (laughs) know ye not that you are the temple of the Lord. And you are holy. A holy temple in the Lord. The temple that you are. The Lord said that those who would try and destroy the temple, that God would destroy. He's not talking about smoking cigarettes. Somebody said, we're not supposed to defile the temple of the Lord by smoking. I'm not talking about smoking cigarettes. That's not what he's talking about in Scripture. Who's those who would defile the temple of the Lord? He's talking about those who would come in among God's people and bring in heresy. Those who would come in among the church and bring falsehood and lies. That's the defilement. That's the blemish. And those who would try to overturn and lead God's people astray and lie to them and teach them things that are not the truth. God said he will destroy them because they are the temple of the Lord. So be careful what you say. Be careful what you teach others. Be led of the Lord. If you don't know a thing for certain, keep your mouth shut. And seek the Lord until you get an answer about it. Know for sure and certain what you say and what you do is from the Lord and of the Lord and of the love of God that's in your heart. Because we are the dwelling place of God. Your salt, your light, you are the dwelling place of God. 
Remember the sermon I preached here a few Sundays ago? Where is God? Where is he? The moment your heart cries out, that's where he is. The moment you call upon him from your heart, that's where God is. The moment you humble yourself before him, that's where he is. And to the whole world, I say, the people of God is where God is. Where is God? There is no God. I don't believe in God. But God is where his people are. If you want to see where God is and what God's doing, look at his people and what's happening in their lives. Amen. Believe their testimony. For they have a witness to give. They asked Jesus one day, said, where do you get your authority to talk like this? Who gave you the authority to speak and to teach this? Boy, they were jumping on Jesus because they didn't like what he was saying. He turned and looked at him and said, you hypocrites. I'm going to ask you a question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I do. He said, the baptism of John, was it from men or was it from God? If we say it's for men, we can't say it's from God. Jesus is very well. You don't give me an answer. Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. You sent unto John, and he bore witness to the truth, Jesus said. He was a light. But you wouldn't hear him. But I received not testimony from man. He that is of God speaks the words of God. He whom God sends speaks the words of God. He says, I and my Father are witness to who I am. The testimony of two. I tell the world today that you are a testimony. Where is God? Where is God? He's in your heart. He's in your life. He's in your words. He's in your head. He's in your eyes. And he's in your ears and your tongue. He's everywhere. He's in you. You are the temple. You testify to the living God. Amen. Amen. Stand with me, everybody. And we got time. 45 minutes just isn't long enough. I'll go through these other six or seven next Sunday. How's that? Just remember, when you go out into the world every day, you carry with you, within your spirit, the answer to every question that men have about God. You carry with you the healing of the wounded and the broken. You carry with you the light. You carry with you the warmth that melts the coldness of this world. You're the fire 
that burns in the cold, cold world. Think about that. In this cold, cold, indifferent world, you are the fire that burns. And you carry with you the warmth of the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. You're not alone. And everywhere you, people that you're around, they don't feel alone anymore. Amen. They feel closeness to you because that warmth of Jesus embraces them. Yes, and they just want to get closer. Say, that feels pretty good. Let me get, I'm kind of cold. Can I get closer to you? Tell me more about it. You love to have conversations around a fire in the, in the wintertime and the Amen. fall of the year. Yes. I love it. I love to stand around and make a fire at night and roast weenies and marshmallows and have friends and family around. And we're, when we're talking and we're just, you know, we're just loving one another and having good fellowship. We just love to be there together, freezing but getting warm by the fire. <laughs> That's good, man. Let's do some more of this. Yes. That's what it is with you as a child of God. You are the warmth. Let people come around you and warm their hands. Warm their spirits. Warm their cold and desperate souls. Let them hear the warmth and the good news of Jesus that warms them, embraces them, heals them. It gives them hope that takes them away from this old, dark, cold world and brings them into the warmth of God. Ever heard anybody tell you, I like being around you. There's something about you I just like to be around that. That's because they're in a dark place, cold place. When they're around you, they feel warm. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Glory to God. That's who you are. That's what Jesus is talking about. Father, in your name this morning, yes. we walk out of this building. In your name. We go into this world in your name. We face this world in your name. It is the banner we hold high. It has your name written on it, Lord. Hallelujah. You have placed us here for your purpose to hold the banner high. Let us never forget that. In Jesus' name. To bring health, healing, salvation, forgiveness, all the things that man needs that we have in Christ. Yes. Father, let us walk and not be weary. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless God from now on, I'm not going to let the devil dampen my spirit. That's right. I'm going to keep the fires burning. Amen. Keep the home fires burning. Amen. Keep the light shining. Lord, forgive me if I failed you. Forgive me. Forgive me when I forget you. Forgive me when I complain and grunt and grumble like everybody else. Forgive me. Make me strong. Make me strong in the Lord. In the power of his might. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming and hanging around with us. I pray that you have received the word of the Lord. Yes. Keep it with you. Take it with you. Let it burn in you. Keep the oil. Keep your lamps burning. Keep oil in your lamps. Yes. Keep it burning. Yes. Amen. 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 Do you feel it burning? Yes. Do you feel it burning? Yes. Whew, I feel it burning, brother. Yes. Yes. Mm, 
That's what I want. I want to feel it. I want to feel that fire burning. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Anybody need Jesus this morning? Anybody lost? Is everybody saved? Are you saved? Raise your hand. Let me see it. Thank you, Lord, for all your saved people this morning. Keep the fires burning them, Lord. Let them forever walk in the light as you are in the light. And love one another. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands. Be friendly. Come back and see us. Amen.